This is the 22 acre piece that always sits a little wet. I'm gonna be curious how the corn looks here. Super nice that we can actually see the corn from the road though. I like that. Welcome back guys. We're gonna go do some uh, population stand count tests, if you wanna call them that. So I planted this May 12th. This is gonna be the worst looking corn on this farm because this sits really wet. So when it sits really wet and stuff, it, it probably, I would say, stresses the corn out a little bit. And I know half of this is always gonna just yield horrible until we get some tile in here. So we'll start with the worst looking corn and then we'll work our way to the best looking corn. Okay, population check. We're gonna spin three times in a row and then toss this up wherever it lands. That's where we're gonna check population. Three, four, I'm gonna toss it straight behind me. Right over there. So this is gonna tell us, I measured out 17 feet, five inches, and this is gonna tell us how many plants per acre we have. Now I planted at roughly 33, 34,000 plants per acre. It, my, my planter monitor wasn't accurate, and the, the planter seemed to be a little low, and so I bumped it up a little bit, but my planter monitor, my tractor doesn't have radar, and so I had to stay at a perfect speed to get my true population on my monitor. Otherwise, if I was off by 0 0.1, 0 0.2, it would be a higher or lower population that it was showing me. The real population obviously is just all gear driven. So, one, two, three, four, one, 32, 33, 34. You can see they got a little nice rain in them. That's what corn's supposed to do. It's catching the rain. There's a little rain in there. Okay, 34. So that actually looked good. Roughly 34,000 plants per acre. Um, all of them seem to be coming up good. I do notice with my planter, there are a lot of doubles. And the thing you don't, I've, I've tried to do some research on this, the thing you don't want is you don't want skips. Doubles seem to be fine based off some research. I mean, it, obviously it doesn't, it's not perfect, but uh, as long as we're not having like huge gaps in here, that's really what starts crushing yield when we have big gaps. Here's an example, spacing wise, planter planted two, two, and then it goes perfect spacing right here. So I'd like to get the plants a little better, but We'll work on that later. So I'm not sure if you guys can tell, but yield difference right here, it looks really thin. The corn seems a little delayed. If you go right here, the corn's a lot more greener. It looks to be a lot ahead of this corn. This was planted exact same time, exact same day. And there is a huge yield difference on my monitor from last year, from right here, a line right here, where the corn ho looks horrible versus where the corn looks better. Right here, all along here, cutting all the way back to that tree line. Everything over here stays a lot wetter. Everything right there where there's a lot of good green corn planted same day stays a lot drier. I think because there's tile right there. I swear, I know there's tile right there. It's actually looking pretty good. This is a 45 acre little piece of here. I'm standing on kind of top of a hill here. Overall though, I would say uh, probably like a seven or eight out of 10. I'd say last year was like a nine out of 10 probably. Um, it seems like there's just some spots with corn on corn where the emergence, my row cleaners probably didn't do the best and uh, the emergence isn't perfect. There's some spots that are a little taller, a little lower, and maybe this is just the ugly stage of corn where corn's kind of always a little ugly at this stage, but uh, I would say probably a seven or eight out of 10. You got this little sprayer. Should be nice for around the shed. Okay, we're gonna get to cleaning this thing off. Tractor's pretty clean. Gotta empty the rock box. We've got a lot of miscellaneous stuff we find in here. And then the planter, she's a little filthy too. We finished in the rain a couple weeks ago. We also have a row unit with two openers that are just, they're screeching like crazy. Sounds like they wanna die pretty much, but uh, I think one of the bearings is off on one of them. So I'm gonna try and take those apart. That way this planter is ready to go next season and we don't have to think about it all year.
dryer is clean, had to wash her twice, three times, soaped her down, and then sprayed it off again. There's a lot of mud on there, but she's all good now. Okay, 8110's cleaned up, looking good. I want to wax her this summer, but we gotta do a couple more jobs yet. That'll really keep her clean. Have a couple pallets and a bag of seed. We gotta run back to uh, seed salesman here. <sighs> I feel like I deserve one of these. My mom never lets me have these at home. Do not tell my mom about this. So this is the no-till into uh, weed cover crop here. And it's actually, it's all dead. And it's not too thick anymore. Look at that. That's looking pretty good. These are dying off and that corn's actually gonna get sunlight now because before it was just shade over by all these weeds. So it's gonna get a lot of sunlight through here. I was wondering today, where the heck is my tape measure? Looks like we left it here from last time. There it is. Oh, sorry, I, I totally forgot that you guys haven't even seen this yet. There was a couple clips I did uh, about a week or two ago where I went out and did this, but it was way too windy and so I couldn't use any of that footage. So this is the first time you guys are seeing this into the no-till field. This was, population was a little lower, so we planned at 32,000. I was coming up with 30, 30,000, 29,000 plants per acre when I measured it. That's why we had the tape measure out there. So it's really good. Dude, it was looking a heck of a lot uglier than this. Like. It was delayed, there was some uneven emergence, and now everything's looking a lot better. So I'm like, wow, I am just surprised. That's why I'm so happy to see that going through and weeds are dying off, so that corn's gonna get sunlight now, and before it, it really looked like a mess. It was a little scary. It's a new day now, and we actually, uh, we're gonna try and clean out the seed out of the seed box. I got Spencer with me today here, and uh, we're gonna try and also yank the duels off the the 8110, so that way we can uh, side dress some corn with urea here next week. I think next week. The one thing I forgot to do is get all the trash out of the trash whippers. I'm thinking next year that these trash whippers, I would really like to get the floating ones because we're in a lot of situations where we're conventional till, no till, um, some hybrid tillage, some vertical till, some and planter till. Plant, plant or till, if you want to come with that. So we're just like, it would be so nice to adjust them in the fly. And you see guys with, uh, I think, preci precision planting ones, the clean sweep, are they? Where they just have a knob in the tractor that they just adjust, it's raise and lower, way. and then they have the pressure, yeah. No, it's air. So I think they have a compressor up here, and then it's just, uh, it's air. And I don't think they're row mounted too. So that's a planter upgrade I'd really like to do next year. So a while back we had this, uh, we had to do, a, it was the last video, we had to do a in-season repair and we had to weld on one of these bolts here and we're just checking to see how messed up this thing actually was because we just, it went, it worked. This just will be normal. Yeah, it broke. Yeah. Okay, so how messed up is that bearing in there? Second of all, Spence, how the heck are we gonna get this thing out of here? Yeah, we can, uh... Okay, so me and Spence made an in-season repair on this thing, and, uh, looks like it broke off. I don't know when it broke off, but this bolt, Where's so we had to weld, end? I don't know where the other end is, we had to weld this bolt here, and the weld broke right here. I mean, it was holding in there, but I think the thing holding the disc opener in there is legit was the scraper and then the uh and then the gauge wheel i think it was riding on that there yeah i think that's so, what i was doing what was showing when when this was here what was sticking out nothing again? nothing was sticking out what was it riding on to... it was riding on this got you there's a little something and then the, what was putting pressure into it should have been the disc okay. scraper disc scraper and then the gauge wheel spence has got her stop spinning stop spinning tight, tight, so that was that screeching noise so we'll get a 
It must be bent pretty bad then. Okay, we're gonna get the planter folded up, put away for the summer and winter. We're gonna try and squeeze this field cultivator in the far corner here. We can, we got the space so we might as well put it inside. Trying to get everything organized in the back of the machine shed here. I know we're gonna have to go through that corn head this summer because row would be row one. Row one was acting up like a ton last fall. So I'm thinking we'll put all new uh, rolls on it just so it chops up the residue a lot better. Don't mind those things. They're used for checking crops in the winter. The guy I was talking to was like, it's a lot easier if you just lift them with the chain. And we finally get to try our new fuel barrel. Oh Spence, the trouble we went through to get this thing going. <laughs> True, it was you. For the first time, red diesel is going in the tractor. Spence is going to go up on the box. along the tire but it was weird it was tough getting it on so we're gonna try and lift it there's a hole here where we can put the chain through we're gonna try doing it this way Seem to be a little easier. That was a ton easier and a ton safer than using the forks. I like that way, a lot better. Okay, tractor's good to go. The reason we're uh, taking off the duels is because we're gonna spread urea. So we're gonna top, it's called top dressing, side dressing, top dressing, top dress urea uh, over some corn. So corn on corn, I am really really would like to split apply. And even some of my farm, corn farm that's 12 miles south of here, I'd like to split apply that too. Just because, uh, especially on that farm, on that farm the CEC is, uh, there's some lower CEC soil was just, it can't hold all the nitrogen you need for that year. By the rule book, it can't hold all of it. Some guys would just put all the nitrogen up front, but I'd, I'd rather just split apply that farm. So we got uh, 130 pounds of nitrogen on that farm. And we're gonna put like 50 or 60 more pounds. And then we got 180 on a, my better farm. And we're gonna add, I think 50 more pounds, but that's corn on corn. And that was corn on beans. <laughs> coolest thing just happened so we we're changing out duels a neighbor stops by he's got some land he's taking out of CRP he walks up to me and Spencer and he watched some of the YouTube videos and stuff and he was like hey would you want to rent my 12 acres and uh, so we we're like heck yeah we'd love to rent it so we're gonna rent his 12 acres and it's just coming out of CRP and I think we might be able to put some beans in it this year even like this is this is pretty cool this is this is like the first time ever somebody's came to me and asked to rent land and that's uh Pretty cool feeling. So we're gonna, I think we're gonna go take a look at it 
And then he's, he's got some trees and stuff. We may pull them with the skid steer. And then I'm like, well, let's just get a crop in there. Because usually the first year's a little ugly. Let's get a crop in there, and then hopefully we can have a good crop come the second year. So this is uh, pretty cool. We're going to call it a day, guys. Well, half day. We only worked a half day. Anyways, seriously, thanks for watching this one. I'm pretty, pretty pumped. That was a good way to end the day. But anyways, guys, thanks for watching this one. Always appreciate it. We'll see ya.